In this and the next series of videos, we are going to discuss how to annotate your experimental data using Bioconduct. Annotation is a process of giving context to experimental data using external information. This can be done in many ways, but uh, we usually think of linking our experimental da data to various databases or repositories. This sounds easy, but in practice it's hard and tedious, and it's also ambiguous. There are many databases that host the same kind of information, but are different in small details. Even a seemingly simple question such as, what are the genes in the human genome and where they're located, are going to have different answers depending on what resource you use to answer the question. Here we're going to give a couple of examples of annotation. First, we're going to look at annotating an Affymetrix microarray. On an Affymetrix microarray, you measure a set of DNA using probe sets. These probe sets have an identifier, which is a code that is somewhat arbitrarily picked by Affymetrix and tells you particularly which piece of DNA was measured using this probe. In this process, when we annotate uh, the probe set, we link it to an entree identifier using a database. Entree is a metadatabase hosted by NCBI, which is kind of a union or a set or a superset of a lot of different databases that are hosted by the federal government. Once we have the identifier, in this case here, this probe set measures gene number 25 in the database. We can look up gene number 25 and learn that the gene symbol is ABL1, and we can learn a lot about where in the genome is the gene and what kind of function does it have. Another type of annotation is annotating a genomic interval. So here we come with a genomic interval, in this, in this case a 1KB interval on the human genome, and we want to figure out are there any genes nearby, are there any regulatory elements, is the uh, sequence or the, the interval is that conserved across different species. And one way of doing that is to take the interval and go to UCSC and look it up. And here we get a lot of different tracks, I've selected a few of them, that gives us different types of information. Some of these tracks are really just other types of experimental data coming from other labs. In this case, there's a ChIP-seq track from ENCODE that measures a specific type of histone modification. When you are annotating using other types of experimental data, you should always think about that this experimental data, while hopefully well processed and uh, well prepared, has, as always, certain biases and certain problems with it. So you should always be a little careful about interpreting it. So the challenge in uh, this series of videos is how do we do this quick and easy for hundreds or tens of thousands of items simultaneously. In order to do that, we need to do it uh, in a programmatic way. And preferably, we want this to be really easy so that the rate limiting factor is not, uh, and it really becomes our imagination, and not the fact that it's really quite tedious to do this for different databases. There are two main approaches to annotating your experimental data in Bioconductor. One is using annotation packages. Annotation packages are R packages like any other R package you're using and contains basically pre-processed and packaged uh, information from various resources. This has been very popular for annotating uh, microarrays where we are taking information from the vendor, in this case Affymetrics, and packaged it up and serve it as a nice, easy to use R package. Another way of annotating your data is to use online resources. Online resources could be databases such as UCSC or Ensemble. And the advantages of using online resources is that we can get a lot of data and we can get it right now, we can get the latest data. The disadvantage is that you really have to keep track of when did you query the databases, what version of the database did you use, and what type of information did you get back.